All right, so a couple months back, I did a video uh, with Real Talk saying basically how people don't know like the lengths to which I went to like stay positive, remain positive, and make use of the situation that I had to try to like, you know, do the best job I could with this channel in terms of like the cooking aspect and just still trying to bring some sort of material like that, content like that within the framework of which I had to work with and you know the behind the scenes of it all and how I was washing dishes in like a jail shower and living in like a rugged basement scenario <laughs> like depressed secretly um, and just kind of trapped by winter and the fact that I didn't have a license and things like that and just trying to commit to YouTube and make like the dream work and like get you know try to get the shit going uh, to to a level where you know, it was kind of popping enough to like, I could start like stacking away some change and stuff like that. And I said in that video how I was like too embarrassed to ever show it back in that time. Because <laughs> social media, you know, it's a, it's a big facade a lot of the time. And yeah, I was super like, too embarrassed to show it. Absolutely. I didn't want to break that image of now, you guys knew that my life wasn't in a good space. Like, I was saying, like, my life's not, like, my life's low, low right now. It's like, no frills, low. But you didn't know the extent, right? So, I said in that video, one day, I might show you the situation I was working with. Now, today is that day. I'm going to show you. Things have changed uh, quite a bit in the scenario here. Um... And you'll have to excuse the state of the washroom because when I was in there, it was not like this. Clearly, my sister's been up to some crazy shit in there. I don't know what she's been doing, but that's whatever she's been up to. Uh, when I had it, it was as clean as I could possibly make it because I'm kind of a clean freak. But here we go. Come along. I'll give you a little tour of how it all was. Okay, so... As you can see, definitely a basement, <laughs> definitely a cement floored basement. Old school, the seventies panels, got lights here, you flip them on. But uh, of course that one doesn't work. That one did work. And uh, here we go. So this is much different looking. I had it obviously definitely cleaner. My sister's got a whole gym in here now, as you can see, but where the treadmill was i had my single bed like a college virgin bed probably the size of the treadmill basically but higher <laughs> so i had that bed there i had that chest at the end of it with just some stuff on it some food stuff basically i bought those shelves which stayed and she used as a gym thing but they were up there and i used to keep it as kind of my pantry these windows, like I said in the video, I couldn't see shit out of them. They were very, you know, they made it dark, dingy, and depressing. Once again, she actually has painted it since, as you can see, it used to be that, but now it's this. And then right here, <laughs> where that thing is, I had one small Ikea table. And I had, like, my air fryer. And I bought, actually, a deep fryer at one point, And I had a hot plate. I actually burnt the wall. She painted over it. But I bought like that hot plate thing. And I had a clamp lamp on the side of it. And then I had my little tripod and I used my iPhone. And back when I did like, like I did like a country style burger and I did ribs. I did actually weirdly some of my best videos in that situation. They were actually pretty dope. Not gonna lie. The Sam the Cooking Guy video for those knives, like those chicken sandwiches and shit. I did right there. And yeah, I just used to like try to do my best there. I used to have a chair right here. This this used to be where my hats, so I would hang all my hats on here. And now it's for gym ropes. And then this right here, where the, back there was where all the magic happened. So the OK sign, I wonder if you can still see the drill mark right there. So that OK sign in the back, that was right there. And then I had those lights running along here and I had this all foamed in i used to sit on one of those chairs and i had another ikea desk right here and i had it all kitted out so that i could just basically sit down 
flick shit on. I had a ring light attached to the desk and everything. And boom, I used to record there in that corner and that window there. So this is what I was living in. Oh, and yeah, another thing, just because that light didn't work. The remnants of me trying to get like pot lights, basically. I just bought these from <laughs> Canadian Tire. And they burnt out within like a week. And then I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to have to basically live in the dark. But ultimately, I ended up using lamps and shit. Now, if you'll come over here to the more depressing part is my jail shower internment camp style life <laughs> in this bathroom. So we got the sick checkered parkade floor. Now this is, like I said, much dirtier than was when I was in here, but as you can see, exposed pipes, dingy exposed pipes, broken ass wall, toilet. I used to lay towels over this and over this and here this. Now I would try to do as many dishes as I could in here that I could, but like I said, it's, it's like a, you know, a football would fit in there basically. Here's like a cleaning product. It's, uh, I don't know why it's blue now as well. Hello, how are you? Pipes, cool, awesome. And then, you know, I would set things up there to dry and then I would towel hand dry them after. Used to hang a towel there. And then here's like the main part. This is my awesome shower. <laughs> so, boom. It's super grungy now. She was obviously washing off some like yard items. She used, she doesn't use this basement for anything other than when her brother's life falls apart. So, uh, yeah, it's, as you can see, like I said, it's like a single little stall. It's just made out of like this, this vinyl essentially. And I can like barely fit in it. <laughs> I don't know if I get a selfie in here. So not bad i guess i made it work <laughs> and yeah i used to bring cutting boards in there and like wash them in here because you know my sister had her own baking operation and her own life upstairs and she had a lot of dishes on the go all the time and i just didn't want to impose and i wanted to make it work for myself and i wanted to do you know what i wanted to do when i wanted to do it so i just used this area you know as best as i could and it's no longer my reality anymore. So it's, I mean, it's all good. It's just for a year of my life, it was that rough. It worked, but like, as you can see, it's, it's a, it's a basement. Like it's a real life <laughs> basement. And so what I'm trying to express here is that you might see how this situation, you know, could affect one's mental state <laughs> pretty greatly. Having come from, you know, having a pretty independent life in a major city, living in a nice condo, things like that. So life will kick you in the nuts, but I guess you just got to get back up. <laughs> so there it is. There you have it. That's the real shit. That's my old living situation. And you might see, like I said, how that kind of fucked me up. Like I, my life went from literally, I had a nice I was renting a nice condo in like the most hip part of Toronto in the West End, Queen and Dufferin. I had my friends, I had a social circle, I had a life, you know, I had access to just, you know, because in the city you can just travel so freely if it's a bike, if it's just the, the TTC, you can just like walk anywhere basically, like it's just, it's much warmer in Southern Ontario and, um, you know, I just had my whole life set up there and I had... You know, people in my same age group and that were still enthusiastic about, you know, creative things and stuff. And that stuff just doesn't really exist here. This town is very blue collar type town. And, um, you know, I just had more like kindred spirits living in obviously a metropolis. And, you know, I just had like life was, you know, yeah, I was struggling ish like I was never like wealthy or anything in Toronto but I always had you know m enough money for everything to cover my life and I always had a chunk of savings which carried me through my illness when I got sick there with that Epstein-Barr virus and that's what ultimately killed 
my whole life like i just getting that sickness and not being able to work for that long and just basically you know just everything that happened my the the, the landlord selling the unit right right when i was you know finished being sick basically and running out of money and just you know the house of cards <laughs> i guess toppled over and pushed me back into this scenario here but like i said it's been a year since that and now my life is once again entirely different again i'm sitting in a truck that i own uh you know it's bought and paid for it's uh it's a 2011 i still have yet to show you that you know it's not a brand new truck but it's a nice truck and uh it'll last me and for a little while and get the job done and and help me further build and stack and try to figure out what i'm trying to do but like that's ultimately what I was just trying to say in those videos is like, you know, people try to <laughs> speak facts on your life and narrativize your life. Uh, you know, And call you entitled and lazy and you're not trying hard enough when they just don't know the real like the reality they just don't know what you're actually doing to try to succeed in this thing that's a it's a dream and yeah you have to you have to fall on your fucking face for a dream and you have to go all in for a dream and uh you know Dreams don't always come true and dreams aren't easy. But for me, it's like the only way I see through this life, like, you know, I need to follow like my, my inner calling of purpose of, you know, just whatever this is, like creativity and, and community and connection and expressing myself and uh because otherwise I, I just i don't know what else to do i don't want to fall into a life of like this mundane grind of this thing that i hate you know and you know even your dream job can become that sometimes like it's a grind like this is all a grind um I understand, and I know that I got to step my shit up, like, I got to take it to the next place and try again, but lots of days, it's very demotivating, uh, just, I feel as if my little window of opportunity on this platform has kind of come and gone, if I'm being honest, and, uh, I don't know, at least, like I have built a small business that operates and works. It's like I'm not in a terrible position. It's just that with the way that YouTube works and the whole idea of like you pop once quick and then it's just like from there you kind of decline. It happens to everybody. But I don't know if there's an opportunity to repop. Like if, if you redo, if you take your content to a new level, which I know I can. I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm in a position right now that's better than it used to be, obviously. I just need to, like, finesse my situation and get into, I'm basically behind the scenes, I'm acquiring things that I need in, in right now. I'm in the process of that to, like, ultimately put out, like, quite good content and get back to some more, you know, 
just detailed shit, I guess is what I can put it, how I can put it. But I'm kind of plotting and scheming behind the scenes and I'm just like, I'm acquiring things that are required for that and I'm, I'm planning and stuff. And so, you know, it just, it takes time and patience and, and, and effort and things like that. But anyways, it just, I don't know, I was, like lots of days I just feel really like super defeated and lost even though my life now is like so much different and better in, in the sense of like my situation. Um, still not perfect though, still not how I would want it. And I just, I have ideas and plans and things that just, like I said, it just takes time to come together. And that's kind of the, once again, the frustrating point, but I have to take it day by day and just like understand that like, longevity in the long grind and like see the long haul and just understand that I can play the long game but yeah that's the only reason I just get kind of frustrated is like I feel like I've put my good foot forward I've put out some pretty solid content along the way and I've tried pretty hard with the best of what I had and I don't know. It just doesn't seem to to hit or catch or whatever. And, you know, it's painful. But, uh, I mean, it's worth it. Especially since, you know, I, I'm in a position where I basically just, like, work for myself and you know, it's still a very low paying exit. Like, it's just, you know, it's like, I'm not a baller or anything. I'm not out here caking or anything. I'm just, you know, I'm making a living doing the thing that I like to do. And I kind of make the decisions on what I do and I show up and do it. So that's good. That's really like a good thing. I'm grateful for it. It's awesome. It's just, it's just the, uh, the pressure and patience and time and, and keeping up with the belief and like keeping up with the faith and thinking like, okay, do I have this in me? Can I go the distance here? And can I bring, can, can I ultimately, you know, garner the success off of what I want to do? I see a lot of people out here, like their numbers grow quickly, but they're doing these videos that I just can't bring myself to do. Like, I personally feel like like, I just wouldn't be satisfied because I have such a different personality or angle or something to offer. Like, there's a lot of people that succeed by just, you know, they just smash the food or whatever. And they, they don't, you know, I know it's more about the food, I guess. But I don't know how to, I don't know how to be that way. I don't know how to do that content. I don't know how to just sit there and like not be try to bring something like interesting to the table or something i don't it's so hard to explain i guess but i just i don't know how to be simple like that it's just like not in my frequency it's not in my wavelength like i like to have you know thoughts and opinions and narrative and try to just make things kind of interesting i guess i don't know but people really just love the sound of the eating and watching the people eat the food, which I understand the simplicity of it. It's just like, it's hard for me to want to do that and feel to, to do that and feel proud of it. Like, that's the thing is like, when I make content, I want to feel proud of it. I want to feel like I was offering or contributing something. But when I go look at my most popular videos, it's all... I don't know. It's well, most of it's ASMR to be honest. And then beyond that, it's like the ones where I just smash like cringy, but cravies or things like that. It's just, you know, that's what the people want. And that's the hardest part about integrity is that, uh, you know, a lot of people will just do the thing because it's popular and it gets them numbers and money. 
and yeah that's all nice and good and it it helps with your mental state it helps when you're succeeding and you're getting more numbers and money but it also if it's soul crushing to you and it makes you feel embarrassed and not proud then is it worth it is it worth the money and the numbers i don't know i don't i personally don't think so because you know i'd want to be able to be proud of what i do And that's another thing that I'm struggling with with this whole this whole style of content lately anyways is like is is my pride like I don't know if I'm proud of it. I'm proud that I'm connecting with people and people like to hear what I have to say and shit but I guess ultimately I just want to get to a place where I'm I don't know, I'm creating more authentically from my own brain and like from my own skill set and talent and stuff and whatever when it comes to like, you know, making stuff. But that's the other thing too is like you make that content and that content takes so much money, first of all, because all the ingredients you got to buy and then it's like you don't use them all. So there's a budget involved. So it's expensive to make those videos. And then the time, it just, all the angles, the setting up, the getting the clean shots, the editing, the fucking color correction, the the redoing, the chopping this pickle and like the whatever, like the, the mistakes you make, like boiling stuff or whatever, like the reshooting of the shots and just all that stuff that comes with the actual, like the real content. It's just hours and hours. And it's like, my channel's at a situation where it's like, I gotta upload like almost every day to like stay alive financially, right? Now, if I could make a, an amazing, awesome, like super in-depth video, like a Lizzie Lou, but then I only get 6,000 views on it, which is the case with me, that like, I can't upload once a week. I'll be dead in the water. So I could make an amazing video with the hopes that it'll do some numbers. But my channel just, I don't know, like I, it's very rare that I get numbers. Even when I do great stuff, like good content. It's just, it's hard to get those views up. Like it's hard to get 143,000 views or 200,000 views when... At max, I get like 12,000, 13,000, maybe 15,000 if I'm lucky on a, on a certain video. So it's like, I'm just stuck in a place of like, I gotta upload lots to stay alive financially in order to like run the channel. But I understand that like, I'm gonna have to take a risk or like put in greater effort into these other videos that have the potential to like, actually blow shit up bigger than to where I'll have more time freedom relative to finance and like how much views I'm bringing in per month. So yeah, I just find myself in, in, in a pretty kind of catch 22 ish scenario with relative to, to that, to, to the actual creation of the content and how often I need to be uploading and the amount of views that I need to survive. So yeah, I don't know. It's tough, man. It's uh like I still I still love this shit. I still would love it to work out. I would love to even get the hundred K. Like I don't know why hundred K is the mark, but it does seem that when people hit a hundred K, all of a sudden their numbers like their subs start going up pretty exponentially from a hundred K. But it's like at this point with my rate of growth, it's gonna be like another four years to get to a hundred K. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's just rough, man. Like when you, when you put in mad effort and then you see these other people like who just, they have 400,000, half a million subscribers and they're getting their bag and it's just like, and they're not, they're not doing anything that great. You know, it's nothing, 
you know it's pretty standard stuff it's pretty like honestly lazy content but yet they're just crush so it's tough you know i don't resent anybody i just i'm annoyed by like by the why like the why why is that the case that's more my thing you know, everybody can do well and get their bag and, and, and have their success. That's fine. It's just for me, it's the why that I'm annoyed by, you know? I just wonder why certain things that aren't that awesome get huge rewards and other people that do better things just can't seem to get anywhere. <laughs> That's life. I understand that. It happens all in every industry in the world. You know, and I don't know what to chalk that up to just dumb luck or, you know, God's plan or destiny or whatever the hell it is like fate. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. It's a real thing, though. Anyways, that's where I'm at. When you guys see when I show you my new bathroom and my new shower scenario uh you know you'll be like oh okay i get it this guy i can see how everything's a lot better now eventually i will show you all of that trust me it's not that i won't uh once again i'm just i'm in a position of acquiring and setting up and getting things to the point where i'm you know excited to like reveal you know everything that i now have going on because you know i'm not the type of person who likes to really half-ass shit when it comes to this stuff like i don't want to just show you some half-finished life that i've started to put together like i want to get myself completely situated which i'm not entirely situated with how i want everything to be when i finally actually like show you know where i'm at now which is like i'm in a way like i'm in a great place in terms of my life now with like acquiring things and things that i have and and all that so i'm just not there yet i'm not ready yet i just i still have to like piece it all together because you know <laughs> furniture isn't cheap two thousand dollars for a couch and you know seven hundred dollars for a tv and shit like that so it's like you know i'm month by month i'm piecing together my life but uh i'm close i'm almost there so hopefully pretty soon you guys will get to see that i don't have to be as uh depressed by my surroundings as i was one year ago okay so i'll leave it at that real real talk today I didn't even plan on shooting this video at all. It just kind of happened. I was actually helping my sister get a new part for her stove. She's at work. She couldn't get it. So I went and picked it up for her, dropped it off at her house. And then I thought to myself, this is a perfect opportunity to, sh to actually show what I used to like live in, right? And so that's, I guess, what this video has turned into. And then it has turned into me just expressing my real current emotions relative to what I do here on YouTube. And uh, I don't know, I hope you can respect it because it's real. And if you disrespect it, then I guess that's your prerogative. <laughs> And if that's the case, then there's just, there's no saving you as a person. And if you're, if you're, if you're going to be that person, because you're clearly just, <laughs> you're uh, down and out then, I guess, or defeated by life. I don't know. Anyways, till the next one where I have some food, eat good, live well, stay true.